Hello, my name is Ken Tate. I'm a professor with the University of California at Davis in the Department of Plant Sciences. Today I'm going to give you a brief summary about the science of grazing management and water quality on rangeland and grazed watersheds in California and across the western U.S. So in California, over 80% of our surface waters are derived from or stored on rangeland watersheds, which represent almost 50% of the state's surface area. We use those waters as a society for clean water, for human consumption, for drinking, to irrigate fresh crops such as produce and other crops, and as habitat for aquatic um, species such as coho salmon and other, other species that thrive within the, the waters of this landscape. There are water quality concerns about livestock grazing as a land use across this, this broad, vast landscape in the state of California and across the western U.S. Um, we can think about these pollutants and their concerns as kind of three different themes. There's microbial pollutants of concern, which include microbes such as Cryptosporidium parvum and the bacteria E. coli. There are concerns about these um, pollutants because they are potentially pathogenic and can create illness in humans if ingested at high enough concentrations via drinking water or during swimming events. Um, we're concerned about nutrient loading, basically excess levels of nitrogen and phosphorus being deposited or transported into uh, water bodies, essentially over fertilizing these water bodies, creating uh, eutroph eutroph eutrophication. And when eutrophication occurs, there's generally inadequate or limited oxygen available within the water um, to support um, fishes and other um, species that require oxygen in this water. We're concerned primarily about microbial and nutrient um, from livestock as fecal and urine deposition. Um, the other primary pollutant of concern is sediment, uh, which is coming from excessive erosion that may be being driven by livestock grazing uh, management. And we tend to be concerned about erosion for a lot of reasons, just loss of productivity in land. But the sediments that come from those eroding slopes can um, enter water bodies and degrade habitat for fish and other species. So I think about the science that's been generated on this topic in the last 20 or 25 years, I think about it as a line of research from understanding the sources of these pollutants on the landscape, where's it coming from, understanding how it's coming off of this landscape or surviving on this landscape to be transported to or deposited in to uh, water bodies of concern. And then we think about the resulting conditions. So we're thinking about the sources, the transport, the survival, and the final um, sink, if you will, for these types of pollutants. And so thinking about it that way on rangelands, we have rangeland water, water pollutants of concern. We've kind of described what those are. There are livestock sources, certainly, across this landscape that we are trying to manage um, for as managers. But there's other sources of these pollutants occurring on the landscape. There's other activities, there's urban uses, uh, there's wildlife species, et cetera. And then there's background levels of these, uh, species, of these potential pollutants. For instance, erosion is a natural process, so there'll always be some level of sediment naturally in water bodies um, as a result of that natural process. And thinking about some of the research that's been done, we've found that fecal indicators certainly increase within the landscape when livestock are present. They do elevate those numbers, say of E. coli. Um, we're also finding that cryptosporidium species that exist in cattle exist at low levels, and the types that exist are of limited risk to humans. Um, we start thinking then about once those pollutants are on the landscape, have been deposited, what's their transport and environmental fate dynamics? You know, are they moving with water or are they stuck in place? Are they surviving or are they perishing in this landscape? We found, for instance, that 10% of the pollutant load mobilizes from fecal deposits. That means that over 90% of the pollutants that are in, say, a cow's fecal deposit, say E. coli, are trapped in place right there at that fecal pat, which is an excellent um, outcome if we can keep that fecal pat away from a water body of concern. And then the water quality conditions that result. We've done quite a bit of work looking at water quality conditions, the state of the water, if you will, across these range and watersheds. 
but it's here at this step where we as managers have an opportunity to intervene and put a bit of a control valve, if you would, on the transport of these potential pollutants to water bodies that might degrade conditions. And those are the management solutions that we can bring to bear. And we've found that there's a toolbox of effective water quality protection practices that ranchers can use and managers can use to basically disconnect, if you will, the source pollutant in its transport from the water body of concern. And when those practices are put in place effectively with good management, clean water, recreation, and grazing are very compatible. So in summary, management can certainly create risk to water quality or it can protect water quality. It really depends upon the decisions that the manager makes and the goals that they have. Rangelands have great capacity to attenuate pollutants from livestock and other ranch activities, and we as managers have to work with that potential and maintain that natural potential for attenuation of pollutants at as high a level as possible. And then we need to remember that there's a large toolbox of tested feasible practices which can be used to keep water quality high on grazing lands. And we need to recall that it really is a toolbox. There's no single solution. There's no single practice that will work everywhere all the time, but the toolbox as a whole will provide us the resources we need to keep clean water on our grazed lands. Thank you. For more information on this topic, we invite you to view a more in-depth presentation that provides science-based insights and conclusions. You can find this and other ranch water quality presentations on the UC Rangelands website and look for the Water Quality Information Hub or direct your web browser to the URL shown on this slide.